Hi. In this video, I'll explain the way to calculate the field strength along the axis of a bar magnet. In this image, you can see a bar magnet and you can see a pink and white dotted line which represents the axis of the bar magnet. And we have put a point P somewhere along that axis and that's shown by a small green dot. The important thing here is that the magnetic field direction is away from the North Pole because the field lines go away from the North Pole and then get back into the South Pole. Those are shown by the pink arrows. If you look at a front view, then the point P is acted upon by opposing magnetic fields. The magnetic field due to the North Pole is directed away from the North Pole and the magnetic field due to South Pole is directed inwards into the South Pole. It's like repulsion and attraction, if that's an easy way to remember. And then we plug in some dimensions. The point P, let it be at a distance small d from the center of the magnet and each of the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, is located at a distance small l from the center of the magnet. These are the magnetic lengths here and you will notice that we are not talking about the total length of the magnet. So, the effect of the North Pole is going to be stronger on point P just because it's closer to P. The effect of the South Pole is going to be weaker. So, we have to find the total balance of the magnetic field at point P. That's all there is to this. Now, we define some terms, mu0, permeability constant, m is the pole strength, the most important stronger the magnet, higher the pole strength, higher the magnetic field. So magnetic field B should finally be proportional to M. We have talked about D and capital M is the magnetic moment which is M into 2L. Getting into the derivation, we see that the magnetic field at P is a balance between the magnetic field due to North Pole and magnetic field due to South Pole. The magnetic field in the North Pole itself is mu0 by 4 pi into m into 1 by d minus l whole square. The d minus l comes because the distance of point P from the North Pole is d minus l. The North Pole is located inside the magnet. Similarly, the distance of the point P from the South Pole inside the magnet is d plus l. So we just plug that distance into the equation. We take out mu0 by 4 pi into m outside the brackets and we are left with those terms inside these brackets. We expand them and we get d plus l whole squared minus of d minus l whole squared divided by d minus l whole squared into d plus l whole squared. Think of this as being of the form a plus b whole squared and a minus b whole squared and the mathematics will become easier. Now, when we expand those terms, we will find in the numerator that we will get 4dl because 2dl minus of minus 2dl will be 4dl. This 4dl is split into 2 and separately 2dl. Then we take m inside the brackets and we get 2 into mld. Now we know that the capital M, which is the magnetic moment, is m into 2L. So when these terms get bundled in the numerator we will get 2 into capital M and D remains as it is. The denominator now is of the form A minus B whole squared into A plus B whole squared. That is mathematically equivalent to A squared minus B squared whole squared. So that's how you get the equation for the magnetic field strength at a point on the axis. Now often the distance d is very long as compared to the magnetic length of the magnet. So then in the numerator you get d, in the denominator you get d squared whole squared which is d to the power 4 so you get d cubed in the denominator and that's how we get the equation in the yellow. The unit of magnetic field is Teslas and uh, you can see that the magnetic field is very sensitive to the distance d is proportional to 1 by d cubed compare this with gravitational force which is only proportional to 1 by d squared. I hope this video is useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.